So I'm not going back and forth with a man who thinks that they should be in my position. If you want to be in my position, get in my position. Do you believe that? Bluff City Media presents the Anthony Sane Show on YouTube at Bluff City Media. Stepping up to the microphone is your host, Anthony Sane. Acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Anthony Sane Show. This is, of course, your host, Anthony Sane, here live from the Bluff City Media Studios. My man, Kenny Stubberfield, behind the glass. Kenny, what's going on with you? My brother, you doing good? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm trying to stay alive and stay off Channel 5 unless Let's Doc go. Holiday invites me on to the show. But I'm just trying to stay off Channel 5, man. <laughs> yeah, because you on Channel 5, something bad probably happened. Yeah. Unless you were... Uh, <laughs> A part of Grizz's Media Day. Look at that transition, man. <laughs> hey, bro, you need to get your boy, man. You need to let that man know. Hey, I'm telling you, bro, Drake dropped the album. I'm dropping strays on everybody. Everybody on Blood City Media, you might get this smoke. Oh, on. man, come on. My guy my guy Nate with uh, with uh, Grizz Show, man, the man be talking about he the king of transition. Man, you better. Man, who? 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 Nate Qualls? Nate be talking about, yeah, man, the king. He caught it. What he be saying? He don't say transition. He be saying. Segway. No, I be saying segway, though. Uh, I don't know what he said. I don't know what he be saying, bro. Hey. Watch your mouth, bro. Watch your mouth, bro. Watch your mouth, Nate. For Stay real. Stay in your lane, bro. For real, man. You gotta, hey, host, for real. You gotta host the show, man. I'm on, I'm on my Drake shit, man. Come for real, dog. For real. Whoever want it, bro. Whoever want it. Drop, who? drop real, and give me, who? Drop and give me 50, man. man. Whoever want it, man. Hey, drop and give me 50, Grill. For real. I need. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what you say. <laughs> you the one talking about drop and give me 50, for real. <laughs> All right, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh Grizz's Media Day was up today. I'm gonna get out of the way real soon, probably in record time, to get my man Perry Sharkey on here to talk about that. Uh, all the sights and sounds. Only thing that I will say is that uh, Derrick Rose's uh, uh, joint was was fire. Still, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, his was good. Ja, uh, you know, basically saying he sees the championship team. Didn't get to hear from Marcus Smart. He was sick. Luke Kennard, no explanation as to why he. From what I've heard, no explanation mm-hmm. as to why Luke Kennard was not available to talk. I'm, um, I'm sensing a conspiracy theory. Oh, I got one coming. You know that for sure. But yeah. Um, yeah, man. But I'm gonna get out of the way, man. Let my boy Parrish Sharky get up in this joint. Hey, man. man. Parrish is a uh, celebration mode right now, man. That man's done for the season, man. Oh, first man. year. Done. Congrats to Parrish Sharky, oh, my boy, man. man. Killed it, man. Big congrats. Big congrats to us too, man. This is yeah. our first season. This show is basically a Tiger Tiger basketball Grizzly show. Grizzly is probably eighty percent of, of of the uh, of the weight getting carried by this team. So Tiger basketball uh, Grizzly seasons are over. We got through uh, year one, man. Uh, we started in the off season. Let's go. We got through year one as far as that goes. But, yeah, man, like I said, we're going to get out the way. My man, Perry Shark, is in the building, as he is each and every Wednesday here on the Anthony Sane Show for the sit down with Sane. I'm going to slide out the way. We're going to go to break. When we come back, my boy, Perry Shark, is in the building. We're going to chop it up for about a good 30 minutes for y'all, talk about some grizzly stuff uh, and more here on the Anthony Sane Show. See you guys in a minute. guys fit a plan and a system that Penny wants to implement. All these guys can run for the most part. All these guys have decent three-point balls. All these guys are interested in playing both ends of the floor. Right. There's just more of a focus than there was a year ago. It, it reminds me almost more of two years ago when they had that successful season start to finish with uh, DeAndre and, and with Kendrick than it did a year ago where you're getting all these shiny objects. You're right. working super late into the calendar. But there's a focus on, hey, yeah. three-point ball, play some defense, let's get up and down the floor. That's smart. If David Jones does come back... It just becomes very interesting and open in the lineup combination. You want to be multiple, but the lineup combinations could be very interesting. And you can play a lot of small ball, right? You could have a deadly three-point sniper small ball lineup with Nick Jordan in there. That would be yeah. it's just interesting how multiple some of these guys could be. And I tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. I, I don't do, that's why worst. I'm not joking our games would be three hours and 15 minutes it is the night. worst but if we're I had what headphones on the but I heard hell that was that for many of walls those are definitely gunshots and I, I hear cars still, squealing off still occurring wow all right um wind shares not looking great there is that literally still happening 
Still happening. Ow. Jesus Do we need to be Christ. concerned? Yeah. How many shots is that? I'll lay low for a while. That's at least two dozen shots. At least. It's Speaking of hurt. a volume shoot. <laughs> Khalif <laughs> Battle is outside. Khalif. Don't put that on Khalif hey, Battle. Maybe Mikey. <laughs> Look, it's, our, it's, it's in our I'm name. just kidding. The That's jokes are all there. Sorry. The jokes are all, all right. there. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Answer the Same Show. Each and every Wednesday, my man Perry Sharkey joins us. He's the beat writer for the Memphis Grizzlies for Bluff City Media. Those days are over, man. Yeah, take a <laughs> break, man. Sure. Take a break, they ain't man. Ain't beat nothing. They ain't beat right nothing, man. No, the season uh, is over, man. Fine. Oh, man. I'm, this this season moved by – it moved extremely fast, but it's moved extremely slow, too, because it's been straight up dead for, like, months now, where it's like we're yeah. literally playing for nothing. Like, it, and, and we went from uh, playing about – Six or seven roster players, eight roster players to seven, six, five, four, three. Then it ultimately got down to two <laughs> roster players, one of which became a roster player in the middle of the season, right. Gigi Jackson. <laughs> and the other one was Jake LaRavia. Right. <laughs> That's how bad it got, man, as far as the <laughs> roster guys we had on the roster, man. But, uh, yeah, the season came to an end with a loss to the Denver Nuggets. Um, the biggest thing that's happened since then is, of course, the ex interviews. And yep. we'll spend the bulk of this time – Talking about that stuff, you were in the building. I thought yeah. about going. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't feel like right. I don't feel like dealing with this. Well, man. I tell you, I just made it. So yeah. one day, let us know to like the after the game, what mm-hmm. time it was. So I got my, I got a full time job, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a meeting at like nine o'clock, so yeah. I got there. I missed Taylor Jenkins and Zach Kleiman. I got mm-hmm. there like right as Jenkins was answering the last question. Yeah. So I got there right in time for all the players. Yeah, I, I saw the notification, then I saw the rundown that morning. You know, I live five minutes in FedEx Forum, so I, I had clothes on. I was like, if I want to go, I just mm-hmm. shoot down there. And then I saw the itinerary, and I saw the, the time between each one. I was like, man, this is going to be so fake, bro. It's like, it's, it was kind of a little rush. Like, I remember, like, um, the last huddle, last uh, postseason X interviews I did, it was a huddle, a, a scrum. Uh, form of it, right? And they did it in the practice gym, and I, it seems like I remember them having the the people, the interviewees, up on a pedestal, like a elevated. If we were standing, and they were kind of, they weren't face to face with us. It seems like I mm-hmm. remember being kind of like that. But um, anyway, that's that was the way it was. Where you have everybody. I just like that way better. You can you can get a follow up question in. You know, you're right there with the guys. You could talk to, and you could get your questions yeah. out fast. And it's, it's just better. Because to that man. point, when they ask the questions, like Matt Enfield would have like two questions, but they got to, he got literally asked both questions. Right yeah, man. It's like, I don't like time. this he too. The way they do yeah. it now is just, then it's like they got this allotted time on there. It's like, man, why am I, how you going to give Vince Williams five minutes? I might really got something to talk about, talk to their brother about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was just. Wish it then. So hypothetically, that, that time slot, it, they did go over here. Yeah, of course they had to. Yeah, yeah, of course they had to. Yep. I was like, man, I'm good. I'll see it. Um, you that, know, whatever. So I would say certain players, either either probably we just have enough questions for certain players, but like Derrick Rose, he was up there for 12 minutes. Yeah. Like, so and that man's interview was fire yeah, again. Yeah, bro. He almost, I, thought, I thought he was about to shed a tear. <laughs> I watched he, that John, it was fire again. I thought he was about to cry, bro. I was yeah, like, man. Dang. Yeah, Derrick Rose, bro. Y'all can talk. Y'all can Scotty Pippen in my ass. <laughs> like, hey, bro. I, I get I get all y'all saying about the roster. Stuff. I don't get the stuff y'all saying about why you get a roster spot. But if it come down to letting Derrick Rose go, no, I don't care what y'all. I don't, <laughs> Not even. I don't care what <laughs> y'all say. I mean, man, you, John Sasson was the <laughs> on Miami for how long? Like forever. Derrick Rose could be their last spot, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I'm, I'm gonna say this play. here. I've said it on Twitter ad nauseum, bro. Like the whole Scottie Pippen Jr. thing. Not much stuff is making me roll my eyes so far. Then this Scottie Pippen Jr. make him roster player, and it's just to, just to eliminate the Derrick Rose thing, right? Because I don't want people to think I'm saying okay, like saying saying you know keep Derrick Rose over him. Like I understand that Scottie Pippen Jr. is a much better basketball player. Imagine Derrick Rose is already gone, right? Imagine he's not even on the team. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense to have Scottie Pippen Jr. on a regular mm-hmm. roster contract. Count. It's the same thing we've done over and over again that we yeah. keep messing up with where it pins you in. It's the reason why you had to cut Kenny, Kenny Chandler, who should have still Chandler been on the yep. two-way. Yep. You had him on a regular contract. You had to cut him because you needed a big man because you didn't have any roster spots, so you had to wave him. It's no point in doing it. Like, 
He's literally on a two way contract. For next year, yeah, two years. If they, if they need him to be a backup point guard, which they want, Marcus Smart is going to back up Ja. And he's going to start, by the way. If that confuses you, I don't really know what to tell you. Please, man. If, if, that, if you don't, you don't understand what that – well, do I got to break that down first? No, no, please not. All right. Marcus Smart will start, <laughs> and he'll also be John's back I'm, I'm tired of that. If you watch the NBA, you'll see how that works. You stagger the lineups. <laughs> Marcus Smart will come out first. John comes in. I mean, I mean, John starts, of course. Marcus Smart starts. He'll come out first mm-hmm. to sub in. Vince will come in. Hold on. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Also, Jerry. Y'all did, get it. Also, Jerry and Brandon Clark would finish the game. We'll finish the game. It, it's <laughs> like, simple, man. It's I very thought, simple. I thought if you started at three, you had to play three the entire. And that's it. You can't. <laughs> is that not oh, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Fans make me so bad, bro. I've been wanting to literally just log off my phone, <laughs> throw it, burn it. All right, real quick. For those who don't understand, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart will be your starters, right? Marcus Smart will guard the best perimeter player on defense, whether that's a small forward, the two or the one. He's going to guard that guy. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean we know he's not a small forward. We know Desmond Bain's not a small forward. Marcus Smart will guard whatever the best player is, right? And they'll hide John Morant. I don't know how they'll do that, but they'll hide John Morant. You might see Jaron Jackson Jr. guarding the small forward, depending on who the small forward is. All right? So that's going to be – that's what is going to happen. Marcus Smart's going to be your best perimeter defender. He's, he's going to come out first. The first substitution probably will be to take Marcus Smart out of the game. Vince Williams will come in for him. Marcus Smart will be on the bench. He will rest until John Morant comes Just out up. of the game. Yep. When John Morant comes out of the game, Marcus Smart. Smart comes back into the game, but not as the wing defender, but as the point guard and the wing defender. And Vince Williams will stay on the court with him as well. Yeah, ain't nobody scoring. On ain't nobody scoring. <laughs> so it sounds like to me what you're saying is. is I'm bulk, not a coach. The bulk of the minutes for Ja are going to come in that first and third quarter. He's going to play the majority of those two quarters Thank and you, the Ken. fourth, obviously. Thank you, Ken. Yep. Yeah. So he's going to play all the way up until like a minute left right. in, the, he, in those he's, quarters. He's a grown man starting elite level point guard. You want him to you play as many play minutes as possible. Yep. Right. I don't want Scottie Pippen's little ass or Tyus Jones' little ass yeah. <laughs> getting his minutes. I want John Moran on the court. And you ask, saying, what if John Morant, what if John gets hurt? The season's over. That's the answer. <laughs> that's, that's the answer Thank right you. there. We, we have a- Scotty Pippen Jr. is the same in the season. Yep. All right? And then that becomes a deeper discussion because they'll be back-to-back <laughs> season oh, and yeah. injury. Right. So, you know. Another discussion. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go back to my original point about Scotty Pippen Jr. in the two-way contract, right? Yep. If he's on a two-way contract, that means that whatever role you want Scottie Pippen to do, let's say you think the Marcus Smart thing is not working with him being uh, 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 backup point guard, or you want to just give a different look. Got you 50. know, you want to put Marcus Smart. You got, got 50, 50 games. games. You can do that in. You got 50. 50 games. He does not have to be on a regular contract. You got 50 of them things <laughs> that he can play. Yeah, I, don't I don't know if it goes this way. Or yeah, this exactly. Way. 50 <laughs> of them things we got right for for Scottie Pippen Jr. to play. If that fifth, if he, if if those fifty games are over and you still need Scottie Pippen Jr., that means yeah, that something went wrong. Yep. That means that somebody got hurt. I mean, the Jai got hurt, Marcus Smart got hurt. Bang got hurt. Like big time bad. Like, like yeah. me, you had a lot of injuries. <laughs> yep. If you need to use Scottie Pippen, to be a backup point guard right now, he play making like yeah, you got. Yeah. So with that being said, we love Scottie Pippen Jr. He's a great player. I love his game. He was definitely a yeah. diamond in the rough that they found in the G League. That they have that is a clear NBA player in my opinion. Got, got pops wearing gristy and stuff. Right? right. But it makes no makes no sense to put on a regular deal. Thank y'all. Parents are arguing. <laughs> <laughs> this dude wasn't even in the exit interview. I don't know, I don't know how we even got here. Right, we only had one person who played in the last game. In the oh, exit God. Interviews. And they told us after the game, they was like, hey, only GG's the only one that's going to be available. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Talk about something. I got to get some water. All right. So exit interview. Exit interview. So. Derrick Rose is the probably the biggest. I mean, Derrick Rose, <laughs> he probably is the biggest takeaway because a lot of people saying, "Hey, hopefully retire or you know, all this, get him off the team." I, I, I mean, I wasn't surprised he, he would say it all. Right, yeah. he coming back. Derrick um, Rose getting that money. He said he coming back. He said coming back to Memphis was just a full circle moment. He said things happen for a reason. Yeah, things happen during the season. He sees the uh, the beauty in I forgot the exact quote. Oh like, man, he's saying the, some deep stuff. Yeah, I saw he sees the beauty in in. Uh, man, I can't think of that quote. Yeah. But I know you say you see the beauty in everything, right? And just man, just man, he's just a philosopher now. Like just the way Real he just shit. talk, it's just like yeah. Man, his son. Um, I guess and this probably was already known. I I didn't know that PJ, mm-hmm. his son, plays on John Morant's AAU team. Yeah. 
And he was just saying how PJ used to like ask him all the time. He'd be on the road with y'all. Hey, can you take? Can you hit y'all? Yeah. Ask y'all about. Hey, can I get on AU team? He like, man, I'm. I mean, <laughs> why you ain't on my team? But he was like, he's persistent. He said his son told him he wants to play in the NBA, so mm-hmm. he finna get on him. He's on uh, Jabin Rent's AU team. He was just uh, and his relationship with Jabin Rent, how he was talking about Jabin Rent, how he he's a pro. Yeah, he's like Jabin Rent's a pro. He he man, he's he was very. Uh, Satisfied or uh, what he's seen out of job. He's he a leader, acted. and yeah, yeah, he saw he saw real leadership qualities mm-hmm. out of job. So he, he, yeah, he said a lot of deep stuff. Um, all the other players, I think everything else is kind of not necessarily generic, but it was hey, I think we're gonna be championship contenders yeah. next year if we're healthy. Uh, yeah. Brandon Clark did say something about it's better with him being the six man and Jaren start, which I mean we all do that, but mm-hmm. like somebody was like, oh, did some? I saw somebody on Twitter that's kind of questioning, like, oh, he don't believe he'll start. I was like. <laughs> Hey, these people got high best fans. IQ, bro. Like, <laughs> fans need to relax on all the starting and the whatever. Brandon Clark has never been a starter for us. He's always came off the bench. Now, there are people who, oh man, if if give Scottie Pippen a full time contract is number one, we need a center is clearly number two. Because I think, I think, I mean, fearing if we're going to get a center or not. Like, in a center. Well, Zach Clyde, I, mean, I, I missed his part, but I mean, we all seen it. I heard yeah. what he said. They get in the center. Right. Now, I'm not <laughs> saying that you won't see a lot. I think you'll see Jaron and Brandon Clark or Jaron and Gigi. You'll see that more than you'll see whoever the new center is going to be. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think the Grizz is going to go out and get like some big name. No, no, center. big name, yeah. I think it's just going to be Andre a Drummond? dude. That's going to be an under. If I had, if somebody said like, Bet like who's gonna be the Grizz's center? I would bet Andre Drummond is gonna be the guy they go get. It just he's yeah. in Chicago. He want, I think he wants to start and roll. You could probably can get him for the, the trade, uh, the taxpayers exception, yep. and you just roll. You just roll out there. And if you need him, you need him. If you don't, you don't. You know and what I mean? I can't even see a scenario where they still and I think I'm gonna stop really talking about the draft until we know how else you draft pick now. Mm-hmm. Like now the season's over, we got about yeah. two or three weeks. Let's wait till the lottery right. so we'll know where we're picking it. Something in me um, sees them possibly getting like a Hardenstein or somebody, and I think that'll be hella dope if you can get somebody like that. But that would yeah. take a little bit more creativity to do that. Yep. You, know what it, you know what it would take, what people don't uh, want to hear, though? Cutting not, uh, not exercising the option yeah. Luke Kennard. That'll give you the, the mid-level exception. I yep. think he's a guy that might sign for the MLE if, if he wants to come here. Because I, th- I think he could get – but that's another thing, too, people got to understand, man. Like, th- there's this illusion of, okay, that guy's going to get too much money. The only teams that are going to give these guys too much money are the teams they play for. Yep. There isn't money out there like in the open market like that. Because, because even, uh, to that point, my bad to cut you off. You do good. With Grayson Allen just got the extension. Yeah. Now he wouldn't have got like, there in the open market. Right. And now people like, man. And some people like, man, dang, we had him here. Or uh, other people like, hey, oh, Luke Kennard probably going to cost too much now. I'm yeah. like, Grayson Allen is a better defender. And now he, I don't, he wants the greatest Grayson defender. Grayson a better player he's a better than, defender yeah, than Luke Kennard. Is. He probably ain't the better shooter, but he shot 40% this year. And he's, still, he's a good shooter. So right. my thing is, he can do a lot. A little bit more than Luke Kennard, who's and, just a spot. And team. Phoenix's uh, roster, like their roster is is ass outside of Big Three. <laughs> like Grayson Allen has a much bigger role. And mm-hmm. it's just like, that's what I was telling people when it came down to the whole um, uh, Jake LaRavia thing, right? It's like, okay, when you're like, Jake LaRavia is not some kid off the street. He's a kid who's been playing basketball all his life. Yep. And he's an NBA player. Like, if you give those guys opportunities and say, go do this, go do this. And they have the confidence from the, from the organization to go do this. Those guys are able to do that type of stuff. Right. Like that doesn't mean like I need him to do it outside of there. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it, like Grayson Allen because of the opportunity he has in Phoenix. He 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 wouldn't have had those opportunities here. to be that type of player right. here. You know what I mean? Even just as a spot up shooter, he wouldn't have had those type of opportunities. So it's all about fit. You know what I mean? And what yep. you're expected to do, and what you're asked to do, what you're allowed to do by these teams. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like if because we saw like Jake was out there doing all kind of dribble moves and that type of stuff. Like those that's in, that's in a lot of guys' bag, but they're just yeah. not asked to do that. Exactly. But when you say, "Hey, go do whatever," you'll see. Oh, these Which, dudes could do whatever. And to the point, I want to talk about Gigi's mm-hmm. um, exit interview and how he spoke about things he's working on. He wanted to get a floater. He sees mm-hmm. like. Defenders come man, out. Gigi about to three, be so man. good. I'm finna try and work on a floater game. Uh, <laughs> Gigi about to be good. Right. Shit. And he's, I think he shot like 47% on corner threes. He yeah. said he, want, he wants to get better at corner threes. Yep. <laughs> he shot uh, almost yeah. 50% on yeah. those. Man, dude, um, finna be good, man. Yeah, Gigi, was, Gigi's breakdown on that in that game against, uh, was it LA or was it the la- against Milwaukee where he dunked the ball? He, he took the ball off the dribble and then dunked it. That's the only dribble move that I was like at the end of the year was like, oh my gosh, that's incredible, Jake. <laughs> all the Jake stuff, I'm uh, like, cool, man, go do that somewhere uh, else. Yeah. Gigi, Gigi caught a body uh, against Denver, but he missed the shot. But <laughs> that was so hilarious. I, look, as the season went on, like we've all looked at Gigi's height, right? 
But like I really just kind of noticed like Gigi's small. Like he's not oh, he ain't yeah. like Zaire. Yeah. But he's small. You know what yeah. I mean? But his body looks like it can take weight. Like Zaire's yeah. body like he's gonna be scrawny like that forever. <laughs> but but like Gigi looks like in a few years you'll see like you see Jaren's body, like yeah. in the Marcus Hall video, yeah. Jaren looked like a baby. And now you see Jaren yep. now with a grown man Gigi body. Definitely has to. If Gigi can pick up and keep that athleticism, you talking about a dude that can be you know, scary elite, for sure. Elite, 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 elite level, for real. What you said, he wanted to add about 10 pounds yeah. of muscle. And he also was talking about he wants to be, because uh, he knows, he he understands the assignment. Hey, Ja, Bane, and Jaren going to be back. I'm not going to get as many shot attempts, mm-hmm. right? So right. I'm going to have to attack, make him cap. Cap, cap, uh, crash the glass a little bit more, yeah. right? I'm going to make sure that I'm good. Now, I, he It was something that I took away. You remember coming to the draft, we all, the question about him was his defense, right? Mm-hmm. And he got assignments on guarding the best player or something this year. And he was like, I want to be a, an elite two-way player. Yeah. Like, I want defense to be my calling yeah. card. And here, here, a 19-year-old say that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Whose offensive game is like right. what it is. It's but like, see, oh, wow. to what you said, I – shout out to my boy Chris Ingram. Uh, no Bluffing Podcast every Monday at 12, right, Ken? Yep. yep. Yeah. Monday at 12. <clears throat> um, live. Yeah, live. Live. Yep. yep. Yep, yep. Um, him and Evan. So you Shout can talk to you him. talk trash to him live if you yeah, want to. Yeah, because he definitely <laughs> invites you to uh, challenge his opinions. But uh, Chris has his strong start Gigi thing, right? You do. And I, I can't get with him because my only thing with that is, like, I don't want to see – I'd rather see Gigi come in and, like, blast teams off the bench. than Because if, if you got Ja Bain and, and Gigi, yeah, that means yeah. Gigi has to be – No shots. Yo, dude. No, he's got to be yo – He's got to be the dude to guard the best dude on the other team. Oh, yeah. Instead of Marcus. Instead, yeah. Right. And I, I don't want to put that on him. Not I'm saying, afraid, not saying heard, he probably couldn't do it, but I'm that's not how Vince I want to use it. Yeah, I prefer you not go start Marcus Vince. Start yeah. Vince, yeah. yeah. Because I want Gigi to come in and just blow Sport. up some dudes. Uh-huh. Royce O'Neal, get your bum ass. Right. <laughs> like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> whoever. Like, whoever your backup wing is. I want him guarding him. You know what right. I mean? I want, I want him that's to have to deal with Gigi. You know what I mean? So... Um, I think I just think people forget sometimes how important those bench minutes are. Yeah, like yes. those are the keys to the game, yep. man. Yes, I was watching um, Jaren on on Vernon's show, right? Yeah, that's uh, too. That shit was fire too. Like Jaren is, they asked him who's the best team and why, and he broke down the Denver Nuggets. Right, he mm-hmm. was like. And you know, Jaren, we're watching Jaren mature as well. Like yeah, I look I at Gigi, he's grown a lot. I'm like man, to see how Jaren has changed. Like I, I see that same man, level. Before you get to a point, Gigi Good. spoke about that. He was yeah. like, "How Jaren is saying, man, I did dumb, I did dumb shit when I was 21 too." Man, like, Jaren was so like, goofy <laughs> in the team, man. So, yeah, man. He, he y'all has, don't understand, like, like media wise, the stories we hear about Jaren, like that dude was a weird, goofy ass kid, <laughs> man. Somebody told me that Jaren used to do something with. They said Jaron would like get uniform violations for the weirdest stuff, and he said he would just kind of do it just to screw with the <laughs> the equipment staff or something like that. Oh, right. I was like, man, what the world are you doing, bro? <laughs> but like, I just hear stuff like this. Like Jared's like, man, Jared's just like a, a literally a, a child <laughs> up here. Mm-hmm. It's like somebody's kid running around. But he's he's definitely growing up. He's one of the you know probably wiser players in the NBA. And to hear him break down why Denver was good, right? He was like, he was saying stuff I didn't even know what he was talking about. Like, he was just just NBA at hoop talk. Yeah. I was like, yeah, man, Jaron. And, and he broke down. But something he said about Gigi that made me think about Gigi, he said, uh, he said their bench is athletic and they defend yes. like hell. Peyton Watson and uh, Christian Brown, yes. Come on, That man. kind of stuff matters, yep. man. Like, yep. when you're bringing, when, mm-hmm. when you get a timeout and – you look up and Marcus Smart is at the point, Vince Williams at the two, Gigi's at the three, Come Brandon on, Clark's man. at the four, Jaren's at the five. It's death. It's Bruh, death. That's how you beat Good teams, look. man. Cause <laughs> some, somebody said Good at one look. time, I remember uh, uh, Vernon was talking about this as well as, what's the guy's name? Uh, the guy that passed away, the the, the Grizzlies uh, commentator guy. Oh, um, um his his name is on the wall. Man, everywhere. Man. Anyway, everywhere. he Don might Por- need Don Poirier. Yeah. Don Poirier. Yeah. Oh, okay, I like yeah. uh, I They like were talking, talking about, about um, Shane Battier said this or something like that. But like when when you – the way to blow a team out is yeah. like if you get up 15, it's not to go out there and it's just score some more. If you lock down on defense, the game's going to be over. Yeah. Man. The game's going to be over real when, fast. When Golden State started their run – it was always strength in numbers. Mm-hmm. It was to be. It was Sean Livingston yep. coming off, not missing the mid range shot. Your ass up. Yeah, it was but Sean I, Livingston, Leandro man. Barbosa, like they yep. had those. Dude, those out. two dudes. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I think that our, our second unit 
has an opportunity to just do some nasty stuff, man. When you, um, yeah. Yeah, like for real. You, you, when you give Jaren, because I think, like I said, I think Smart is going to get pulled first. Then Jaren's going to get pulled. Clark will come in for him. So it'll be Clark and, the fi- Clark and whoever the, the center was, right? And then Jaren will come back and come get the big man. Center, yep. And then Smart will come back and for come ja. get Ja. And It'll be Ja, Vince, Gigi, and go out for Vince, yeah. Clark, and Jaren. Yep. And it's that that defensive lineup, if we was up eight, we're going to be up 18 <laughs> real quick. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? For real, though. And then at that point, because I've been seeing it all year, man, like Jaren will be slide to Ja's role. He won't be the point guard. But he'll be the he'll be the point of attack person. Yep. They'll let J- J- Jaron be the one that's getting to the basket. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, in both in life. both of those lineups, Anthony, you yeah. got the opportunity to continue to use Jaron in the pick and roll. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yep. because what has Vince shown us? He is an incredible playmaker pick and roll player, in a yep. pick and roll. Hey, Vince said he wants to get better. I asked him a specific question about what he wants to improve yep. in. And of course they're gonna say all you know, all around. I asked Brandon Clark the same mm-hmm. thing. But Vince did say he wants to improve in the mid range game because he see like a lot of man, mm-hmm. a lot of teams don't guard the mid range. Like, hey, I can get there and I can always have a shot. But yeah, dude, you know, the mid range is coming back. back. I, yeah, yeah, it should never left, but you know, it's a different day. Nerds, Mike D'Antoni, <laughs> James Mike Harden, D'Antoni. you nerds. Harden. That was them, the Houston team. Layups yeah, are threes. Man. Layups are threes. Yep. Only yep. the most efficient shot. in Because I game. feel like Bang, the mid, bro, he could kill the mid range. Man, who you saying? Ja could, man. Ja, yeah, ja, man, please. Because teams play it off in middle way because they don't want him to get to the basket. Okay, I think it was that. I think Christian Ingram said in our group text earlier mm-hmm. about he wants Bang to take more of like a Devin Booker. Yep. Uh, style because yep. it's feeling like it does feel like all oh, that he goes hard all the time. It's yep. like it's probably bad on his, uh, yep. his yep. feet. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna put my conspiracy hat on, man. Uh, it, it was something that uh, Zach Kleiman said that was kind of lingering, and I'm gonna see your opinion on it because my opinion was I just said hmm, that's interesting. Uh, they were asked about Luke Kennard, did not have a different answer. Kind of gave with the weirdo answer a little bit. Mm. He said basically like you know yeah he's a guy we value and. You know, there's some talks we got to have and figure out where we're going. It seems like, was, you know, if it was Jaron, <laughs> you'd be like, hey, come on, man, it's Jaron. You know, we going you know, that's we ain't going to worry about it. You know, we've we've heard those type of responses, you yeah. know, from those type of guys. Clear this up. Did he do an availability yesterday? He did not he do did a meet availability. He was not there. Marcus Smart didn't either. But he got – They said he was, they said said he was sick. Because he was on schedule, so I kind of believe it. Guess who, it, all, yeah. guess who, who else didn't schedule. last year? Who? Uh, uh, Dylan, Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks. Yep. 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 Yeah, Luke may, may have very well. Because y'all got to remember, they call them exit interviews, but they already had the exit interview. The yeah. exit interview is the meeting they had with the GM. Right. <laughs> what we do is just kind of like, the, we call it exit interviews, but it's not. The exit interviews are for it's the meeting that the, the players had with, with the GM uh-huh. before they even got to us. So he might have heard something that wouldn't favor him. It's more like an exit. Marcus Smart might have heard something he didn't think it was favorable to. I ain't saying, I believe he might have been sick. I, I believe that part, but I'm just yeah. saying. I don't think I question on there, and maybe he maybe was too sick coming mm. out. Cause Derrick Rose said he was sick too, and he kind of was. Yeah. He, he, fought, he fought through it, so yeah. maybe they had they did have a bug going around. Yeah, because I know him and Ja had their hoods on the last game of the season. I kind of they had their hoods on sometime, but they was like it, it did look a little like yeah, I think yeah. they ain't feeling it that well. Yeah, how much does that impact? If let's say conspiracy theory is true, we've seen the last of Luke in the Grizzlies uniform. How badly does that hurt the three point shooting for the Grizzlies? Depending on what they're replacing with. Who are you talking about? Canard. Canard being gone. I'm going to get – y'all for maybe do that. I just broke down. It's like you can get rid of him, but you can – Because I, I noticed in your rotation, mm-hmm. Anthony, you didn't mention Luke's name. I did, but he was not high on it's, – bro, it's going to be hard. He's not going to get – It's going to be hard to keep Luke on the court, man. Yeah. Like – Because he's not versatile like the other – The fact guys. that Vince can play the two, the three, and play a little one – Right. If it come down to it, bro, I don't want Vince off the court, yeah. man. Smart could do the same, and but I can I can't hide him though. That's the thing though, because yeah. if if Marcus Smart is my point guard, right, I you can really put I shooting. can make Luke Kennard my two. Yeah. Right. Especially if I got Vince at the three. Yeah, because you can because you got two lockdown wing defenders. But at that point, I got what GG at the four. I'm playing him at the four, and I got Jaron at the five, or, or Clark, Clark at the five. five. Clark at the five, <clears throat> or the a, other center at the or five, the, or, the, or the whoever the center is at the five. When did you say? G, so you think Gigi could be at the could play three four, other four? He yeah. could be, and that's part of why it's best when he come out the bench too. Like he can literally put him anywhere. Yeah, it's just like if, <laughs> they got a lot of versatility that they didn't used to have. I'm gonna tell you what I wish the Grizzlies would do though. I wish the Grizzlies would opt in, Canard, pick up his option, 
bring all your pieces into the next season, right? Go get you a cheap center. Bring all your pieces to the table, Kenny. And then figure out what you need to do. If you like, need to make a trade at that like point. Like trade do. deadline or like earlier than that? I mean, whenever. Just have all your stuff. Have all your pieces. Because he have an expiring contract, so you can. Unless they try to get some out. Man, so many. But if they can go get, if they say, if they know for a fact, they reach out and Hartenstein's available, but they have to let Luke go to do that. You got to let Luke go. You, you have to let Luke go. It's Hartenstein a free agent, though. Yes. He's un, unrestricted free agency. Probably. He's going to make money, though, this year. Yeah. But that's what I just said, though, Kenny. Who can pay him? But you would have to opt in to Luke at that point because you can only do sign and trade for him. You won't be able to. That's true. You're going to have to opt in. There's no. Yeah. You that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Go ahead and opt him in because then you can use him in a sign and trade. I think. I think a lot of stuff going to depend on his draft pick because they might use him and a draft pick. But back to it's what I was stuff. saying, though, Kenny, it's with the whole stuff. thing. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what it sounds like with, with non-nerds of the time. We just kind of take it <laughs> what we think about. We have a, a, a true nerd discussion about a, a, a salary cap. Like, this is uh, how yeah, I think I it works. Yeah, but no, yeah. um, I think that – hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, back to what I was saying, Ken, about, about the cap. The only team that's going to pay him that – like, it ain't nothing but a handful of teams that got cap space anyway, right? Mainly mm-hmm. New York. Right. And you got – no, no, no. It's going to be – you got – it's only a handful of teams that got cap space, right? Yeah. And and none of those teams are actually good teams, right? Right. So, so then, and le- either he's going to stay at home in New York and get paid, mm-hmm. or he's going to play for some bummy team. I don't think he, I don't think he wants to do. It's going to be hard. That's what most guys don't want to do. Aren't they already paying? And Mitchell. then teams who got money, they're not trying to go get no damn Isaiah yeah. Harden. Hardenstein. And they already paying Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, yeah. You ain't go but I'm saying the Knicks teams. are really the only team that can pay him. <clears throat> like nobody's going to pay. Like people say, oh man. Um, then you ready? Uh, Claxton, Nick Claxton is going to get twenty million dollars a year for who? Who 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 has cap space is going to say I'm going to spend yeah. that on Nick Claxton? Because to Claxton. that point, are they going to pay but both? Paul George is out there. Are they going to pay both Hardstein and Mitchell Robinson? So you know what I'm saying, point, bro? He's like, probably available unless you unless they you, decide they're going to trade Mitchell Robinson. And at that point, you might can get him from the, the mid level exception. That's when yep. you say, okay, I'm going to wave. I'm going to let Kennard yeah, go, Kennard and I'm just going to sign. That will free up the the, the mid level exception, and you can go yep. sign. What's the name? I don't know, bro. I, whatever. Like we talked about this in in. Uh, the uh, the uh, Bluff City Media Discord, which you can be a member of for what? How much? Can four ninety nine? Four ninety nine, which also gives you access to the College Basketball Insider Podcast. There it is, the College Basketball Insider <laughs> Podcast with Kenny the Hitman Hoops. I might get on that. I be knowing shit too, man. I know you do. So I might get on that. I might start an NBA basketball. Hey, man. Podcast. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. I leave that with uh, nope. Brian Woodhouse. I'm straight. <laughs> the stuff I know, I got something to tell y'all during the, during the break. Some fire. Hey, uh, DeMarco Cole, my ghostwriter stuff. I know I go tell DeMarco that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lying. I be, I be, I didn't, I didn't gave my boy plenty of little, 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 little situation. <laughs> but no, man. But um, other news, uh, of course, we saw that uh, 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 Jaron Jackson will not <laughs> likely hey, be on the USA team. Blame, blame Mark Giannato for that, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, ass, man. You heard uh, his question you asked him. Yeah, oh, shit. Let me go ahead and let this man know right Jared now. Cut. We ain't even waste your time. Like, you get right to do with Jared. It's like, oh, it's official. He was like, no. Nah, nah. He was like, bro, if ain't official, why you going to drink? He was just saying that he's part of the select team. He's part, you know, he's part of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the big thing. The, 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 you know they go mean? training camp practice against him. <laughs> <laughs> but they are keeping one spot open. And my guys at LBR, you know, uh, Treat the Harder Way, they – Saying, but Jaren should get that twelve spike, but we. Uh, but they see. got uh, MB really <laughs> messed the whole thing up. Yeah, you think Embiid's gonna play? I think he's gonna be injured, right? Shit, you, that's a good point you made. That's why my guys are treated Hardaway saying Jaren might still make the team. They're like, bro, they don't trust Embiid to stay <laughs> healthy. That's a good not, point. And they're gonna need another big man because they got Anthony Davis who has injury questions. That's a good too. point. And it's gonna Bam. be Bam. Yeah. That's a good point. Jerry may end up making that joint for real, man. Yeah, I don't, so man, I don't want. I want Jerry in the gym, man, in beast mode, bro. I don't want that man scooting around with no American flag around right his neck. <laughs> got time for that crap, man. He did with the old heads, so. <laughs> right, man. Got time for that crap, man. I need you somewhere in the gym. <laughs> I want it though. I yeah, I love to see him do it. I ain't gonna lie. I, I love to see him get some redemption, man. Because is Steve Kerr still the coach? Though? Yeah, yeah. Man, I can just bump now. Now I'm straight, bro. Taylor J. Let the, let the uh, scheme god take care. Take yeah, over man, let Draymond or somebody uh, <laughs> go. But that's if you want to say to you. But go. at least he'll be if he do go, he'll be able to like like last year it was him and Josh Hart. Like, yeah. At least he'll be behind like Andrew yeah. Davis, Bam. It'd be and, real uh, fours at five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like you could literally yeah. like see how they pre- yeah. prepare. You like, Your two fives yeah. was Jaron and uh and uh Walker Kessler. Walker Walker Kessler. Kessler. Yeah. <laughs> and they play they play Palo with the five. Yeah, man. 
Steve, Steve made some weird hey, if, I, if I'm what's his name, I'm gonna feel. If I'm the point guard, if I'm the point guard for the Knicks, bro, I'm gonna feel. I feel away though, bro. What's his name? I don't Jalen Brunson. Uh, I'm Jalen Brunson. I thought about that. I was like, dang. He started. He was yeah. the best player on the and team. Halliburton was I the backup. Like, and yeah, Halliburton's on the team. <laughs> like, damn, bro. You folks just they uh, fuck with Drew Holiday on it, Jay. Yeah, yeah, bro. But what, the like, guy. what is Drew Holiday doing that, like, he's got he's, he's got, 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 got naked pictures. He got naked pictures of somebody, <laughs> bro. Like, I, it's my guy because he's the only role like role player. Everybody else is straight stars. That he yeah, like, uh, like he's an all star and all this type of stuff, and you know, but he's just kind of like a defensive minded point defense. guard. Defense, like, which I, I guess when I look at their team, because Steph is your point. You got to have somebody to defend yeah. somebody. Because even like Halliburton, yeah, and Evans going defense. Devin Booker, Devin Booker's got built on defense. Why has my boy never been on one of these teams? Who? Has Donovan Mitchell ever played on one of these? Didn't he? Yeah, hold on. I think Down so. Owned, uh, Donovan Mitchell Team USA. Hold shoot. Because I'm not even hearing people saying he snuck. I don't know the Olympics he did. Maybe the the World Cup one year. I'm not sure. But that dude, that dude is one of the hoopingest, like, but like the la- the last left Memphis, on the outside looking in dudes. The last Olympics, they had a whole bunch of misfits, but they ended up winning with KD and Daniel oh, Lillard. So like, yeah. <laughs> So I feel like he could have been on yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's there was no fans there too, right? It seemed like he was on that yeah. team. Mitchell was a part of the 2019 USA World yeah. Cup team. Oh, the World Cup team that finished seventh. That's why he's not <laughs> no, playing. Sh- they finished seventh. They trying to get. I mean, that's that? weird. That's weird. I got it's. it's I, I thought for sure because he can score, shoot. I don't know, man. That's strange. It seems like he should be on that. Team. I guess who he, who on this current team who he would have because you want Drew Holiday's defense. So I don't know yeah. who took him off of there. Yeah, ain't mad. You ain't take him off of Devin Booker or Anthony Edwards. Put uh, Vince <laughs> Williams on that joint. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it, anything else you got? Anything else you want? <laughs> now, uh, how funny would it be if you wake up one day? Scott Pippen Jr. GG Vince. Scott Pippen Jr. GG Vince. John Jaron on the uh, Team USA. Hey, Ooh, I, hey, <laughs> hey! I told you, bro. Like the fact that they that that I heard that there was a look little. little Week for the pick our team before Ja gets back on the court thing. Like, mm. seats taken type stuff on Ja. Like, hey, cool. we ain't got the most spots, dog. No bad. My bad. That's cool. But, yeah, because I, 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 I heard they kind of had a fear of Ja coming in looking like Captain America this season. And them saying, like, all right, man, we got to put Ja on the Olympic team. But I heard, cool. I heard that was that's, a fear they had. For that's going to help us. That's yeah. help With him being suspended from the NBA, could he have played up Team USA? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a. Uh, I, I know it's a totally different situation. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Steve Kerr, I hate it though. I don't know if Ja. I want to say I don't know if Ja's game would fit, but Ja would look crazy out there, bro. Yeah, you're in the bro it's Ja's game, <laughs> yeah. Ja would be out there looking like a monster, bro. A superhero. Bro. <laughs> right, oh man, he be up there he gonna be. They like run the play. Ja ain't running man. nothing. I, I'm gone. <laughs> I'm gone, bro. Back in C12, out there going nuts with the folks. Jumping on somebody's head. Looking off LeBron the whole time. <laughs> Who you telling? Oh, man, I ain't think about that. That was the game before last. All right, that was so funny. And we ain't talked since then. <laughs> man, you so garbage, bro. I'm so glad that the it league might, is about to flip over, man. Get all these balls. hella trash for a team. If Scottie Pippen Jr. doesn't get hurt, <laughs> man, man, it would have it beat them. It literally took him getting no, hurt. If Jordan Goodwin doesn't look off Gigi. That they too. don't get man, man. That was but wild. he was in because Scottie Pippen got hurt. <laughs> so let's go I was like Jordan, that. did he? I literally tweeted. I was like, did he just look off Gigi Jackson? What the hell is happening right now? How did that bump? How, listen, I love the Grizzlies, but how did that team? <laughs> Lakers are bums, bro. Man, that man bums. Jordan Goodwin came. To, uh, <laughs> hey, that might have been snatching Reaper. I was like, it won. <laughs> Man, Jordan Goodwin came to Gigi like he was Metro booming. So, man, <laughs> stay your ass on them drums. <laughs> stay your ass on them drums. Hey, so I think it was Jason and John was talking about why nobody asked John about the Drake stuff. I'm like, I, I went for it. <laughs> hey, we going to talk about that. That's that came to my mind, bro. Did you see? Church, drum track, church, the music, church, yeah. the church music, oh, hilarious. Nah. Yeah, we are gonna talk about Jai ass and uh, inside the same brain for sure. <laughs> Sponsored by our good friends at Creative Sig. Well, you'll see me uh, there from three to five this this Saturday for four twenty. Man, it's a national holiday. I'm, I, I got uh, I got to pick my outfit out, Kenny, for one of my wear. Pick your outfit out. We got some giveaways. Oh we yeah, got, Creative Sig's got giveaways. We've got some Santa Asylum Pack, THC, man, or some Delta Eight down. giveaways. It is it's gonna going be a good time, man. Down, man, good time. It is going down. Come in, coming sure. um. Partake. Yeah. Get up with your boy. Man. Plug. Get up with your boy, man. But we're about to go to break, man. When we come back, it's gonna be more of me and Parrish. The three pointer is gonna be here on the Anthony the Saints show. See you guys in a minute.
how did you feel about Ashton leaving uh, indifferent or what, I mean it's hard to be like fully indifferent yeah for me if I'm just viewing him as a player and not Penny Hardaway's son I don't know if he fits this this I don't know if he fits Penny's uh, style I'm with you it is just wild to see Ashton Hardaway in the portal leaving his dad's program program yeah if if, if Ashton's leaving Everything must be shit behind the scenes. Right. Like, oh, God, this must be a dumpster fire. And, okay, you can have that opinion, but let's also look at the fact that P.J. Haggerty, number two recruit in the in the just transfer portal, here. just committed there. And Dane Danger, who's another top 40 recruit, just committed. Yeah. So it's like, okay, it can't be that right. miserable. Yeah, I think it can be over. But I also think that people that are just trying to dismiss it and be like, I don't think there's anything wrong with Ashton Hardaway getting in the portal. I think that's a little short-sighted as well. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. I will remember you. After three entire, I think he made it through the third one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He might have left with a quarter left in the third practice. Lou Esposito is gone already. We hardly knew ye. What are you going to do? I'm just proud of him because, you know, his dream was to coach at Memphis, and he hey, got his chance. He had it as a goal. He didn't say coach at Memphis for an entire season. Well, I mean, first of all, hour. when you're getting six times the pay just to go to Michigan, I think you do it. And nobody's going to sit here and blame him. I'm just – it sucks. We thought that that was a great hire. He was coming in. He was a co-defensive coordinator. He'd been a defensive coordinator before the FBS level. You know, you got Jordan, who's in his – really his first year – of, yeah. At this level, obviously, he'd been the D coordinator at UT Martin, but felt like that was a guy that was going to be able to help him out, kind of go through his first season at the FBS level as a defensive coordinator. So I feel like it just sucks. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Right, so welcome back to Next to the Same Show. Me and my boy Perry Shark about to do this three-pointer, man. We've talked about three things going on in the world of sports. We're going to talk about the NBA real fast. A uh, couple of – one strange story, man. Uh, I told y'all at the beginning of the season that this game minimum thing was going to come back and just look stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, an example happened. I read the story. Super confusing what's really going on with this. But Dante DiVincenzo, right, who's had a great season for the Knicks. Yep. Another thing about fit – Chemistry, yep. need, usage, all those type of things. He get around his boys, get in a situation cool. where they really using him. Mm -hmm. He's playing more minutes he's ever played in his career. Been a phenomenal player uh, with the Knicks, man. And and he didn't look that good with Golden State a uh, year before. So uh, Dante DiVincenzo, he's ineligible for most improved player, right? <laughs> I was like, why? And he's played. 81 games? He's played 81 games, right? But That's in those right. games, <clears throat> help me out, Kenny, if I'm wrong. But 62 of, two of them have to be where you play 21 20. minutes or more, 20 yeah, or more 20 minutes. Or more. And you can only have two games that fit into the range of where you play between 20. 15 and 20, right? So he does not qualify. And they said he had four games where he like was seconds, seconds, seconds away. away from getting 20 minutes. Yeah. And like this, like a game not too long ago, like he didn't play enough minutes. Yeah. And he was like, I think Sunday, he was like eight seconds off but or something. But that absolutely sucks, bro. Oh. That you've got to manage your, manage your time like that. If, if I'm crazy, playing on a good bro. team, we blowing teams out. They got to get off that rule. Bro, man. that rule is stupid. Leave it up to the voters' discretion, bro. Right. Like, who gives a shit? How you, why do you make a dude ineligible for an award? Oh, like, for minutes. Let the, let, the coach, let the guys who make the decisions... Say no, that dude's messed too many games. Because also with him, I saw an article. So Jonas Valchunas started all 82 games. Yeah. And he was he ineligible. <laughs> Terrence like, Mann crazy. played 75 and started 71. And Derrick Jones Jr. for Dallas played 76 and started 66. Bro, that is so yeah, wild, ineligible. bro. That dude, that dude cannot be – he can't get the award. He probably went for the win it. But still. But he's supposed to be top. <laughs> I think he was like top – some voters had him like top three. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Bro, that is a super yeah. sad story for that. Uh, there are folks, sure. like J.J. JJ Reddick came out and said he's just going to put him on the ballot anyway. Like, who cares? <laughs> right. What are you going to do about it? It's dumb. And right. then, um, number two, man, uh, another messed up story. Uh, Giannis is is probably going to miss, um, I don't know how many games. Did they say they expect him to miss the entire first round? No. Nah, they said he'll something. They ain't give him a number. They yeah. said he'd be back later. He who they playing? Portions of Indiana it. who beat them four about out of five times. About to get their ass about it. Though. About to get their ass about it. Beat them four out of five times. Right. Season. Even with even with <laughs> even with him, goofy. Something's wrong with uh, Milwaukee. Man. I am Doc Rivers is the coach. Huh? We That's knew, true. We point. knew that was the problem. Too. <laughs> oh, too damn old, man. There's some dude on Twitter talking about. Um, if I'm Milwaukee, <clears throat> I'm looking hard at moving. Uh, Brooke Lopez for for Jaron and Marcus Smart. <laughs> I mean, you lost your mind, bro. Like, why do you people think we we responsible for they boot ass, keeping their boot ass team alive, bro? Like, that's not how it works, man. That's not how it works at all. So yeah, uh, Giannis is gonna be out. Um, oh yeah, I mean, watch watch how Paris Sharkey's uh, uh, <laughs> face changes on this one, man. The Miami Heat get Boston get Boston in the first round. Oh yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, I said you know Boston has to have a level of fear. <laughs> But they play. They see Jimmy. They will, man. but you saying Boston gonna get their ass out? Or, or? Uh, man, something is off with Miami this year. Oh, okay, so you it think Boston like, gonna him? Um, I said when they ain't get the trade for Dame, I was like, Tyler Hero. I just don't trust him. He probably feel away, man. That dude ego probably he do, but sport. he been hurt. Y'all been trying to trade me for yeah. Dame Lillard, for- <laughs> and he been hurt, and he's like, he's never there when they need him the most. So of course we right. trying to trade him. Uh, <laughs> is, he now, right, is he hurt right now? He's just got back. He missed like a whole month. He Jeez. just got back again. And then Terry Rose, it's, it's something off about him. I just don't. Jimmy, it, yeah. So Boston. you think Boston going to put their ass up? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I thought for sure you was going to be excited. Like, yeah, I, I, I see Boston. Nah. I see food. I don't think Miami beat the Philly in this play. Yeah, so I think if Boston, be like, if Boston get past Miami, they can win the whole damn championship. I, <laughs> I, mean, like, I think they're going to the finals. I, just think, I don't think they beating Denver. If they play anybody but Denver. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying mentally – uh, I yeah, think that, you that, that if you get past that Miller Hurl in Miami, ain't no telling what yeah. they can do from there. Uh, number two, um, this one is going to tick me off, man. It's going to yeah. tick me off. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that one last, man. Tiger basketball recruiting. We're going to skip and do that one. Can you help me out? Yeah. <laughs> can I just get somebody else? Because <laughs> you know I told you. I don't hear nothing about these dudes. Matter of fact, <laughs> Penny Sides some dudes. The Wichita State dude. Huh? Yeah. All right. So let me ask you this. Don't give me no comps, man. Let me give you a comp. Cause, no, because I heard you lying already. I heard your lying ass. Here go, Kenny. He's in a group. Oh, a dude is a, uh, seven. Uh, he's shooting 40% on seven attempts. This dude made four attempts, not seven. Well, it's Wichita State record last year. No, we talking. Hey, they beat Memphis in that. In that what, what was they record up? Hey, look, as, a, right. as an individual player, all right, mm, all right. What, is, what would y'all consider to be a – Elite or even a above average three-point shooter. 37%. 37%. Mm-hmm. 36, 37. Yeah, so 30. Colt, like, but uh, let me go. ask you this. A lot of that's determining on Here we go. how many shots they get off a game, right? Like, uh-huh. How many shots do you – how many three-pointers do you need to get off? Is he a volume shooter? Is he a volume a jumbo shooter? shooter. Uh, how, many, how many shots do you think they need to get off in, for that to be a, a – in, um, in a college, college basketball game, seven or eight yeah. okay. attempts. So he's, he's 40% of seven, seven three-pointers a game attempted, 40%. And he's doing it at multiple levels. He's doing it at uh, off the dribble, you know, spot hey. ups. And yeah. what school was he go to? The last. Hmm? What school was he from? Right? I, what are you saying, Parrish? Wichita which State, right? Yeah, Sounds kind of Jaquan Walton. Yeah. Yeah. Who we found out still had eligibility. <laughs> right. Hey, <laughs> stay away. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sounds kind of Jaquan Walton. Hey, I, got, I got in trouble today. Let's not talk about Jaquan Walton. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. Trying to... All right. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I was just saying, hey. But I'm going to say this, man. Penny signed some dude. There's a couple other dudes. He got some kids. There's Memphis kids that went to uh, ITT Tech that he trying to <laughs> – I don't know where these kids came from, but hey, shout out to them. I love to see some kids playing for the city. Yeah, he's got a couple of kids that Mark Freeman, uh, I think his, his name is Devon Barnes. Um, he he's from he's from hey, the great city of Carryville. Yeah, for Carryville. Uh-huh. Uh went off to uh somewhere I forgot where he's at. But anyway, he did same Houston State. Played yeah. the same Houston State. Some kid went to Creighton College so, over here on Highland. Uh, uh, so a bunch, <laughs> of, a bunch of folks. <laughs> Not Creighton. We, no, Creighton College, yeah. Creighton College, yeah. <laughs> so, many, so we decided. Not Creighton College, went to, Creighton. Went to F- Freedom Faith University. Right. Folks like. said, no more Alabama transfers. We're getting uh, the schools on our level. <laughs> all right. Let me say this all jokes aside. Like, I don't know who the kids are. If you want to find out, go watch Gabe and them show. Go watch. 
The two, two, on the uh, what's the, the name? Untapped. With the laptop, with the laptops. Hey, sign up. Go watch them. Sign up for the. Uh, hey, I, I want to know what they're typing half the time. <laughs> here they are. Here they are. <laughs> I'm going to do my impression of them doing so. Here they go. Make sure you show it to. Them. I'm like, brother, y'all realize y'all getting recorded? <laughs> like, like, like y'all just sit up and talk. Oh, dude. Um, hey, man. So yeah, I'm thinking like <laughs> he's like. Like he's shooting like seven threes a game, oh, but what those gunshots? Oh man! Oh. <laughs> hey, hey Penny, oh. that was loud. So <laughs> shout out to Trey, TJ, man. Yeah, so, hey, those guys are awesome. But what no. about like, oh, <laughs> what about like the other guy? Is like from 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 South Florida. I'm what gonna have him? them do an impression of you next. <laughs> right, go ahead. Hey, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't imitate me, man. <laughs> You, you, you ain't got this way to do this, uh, <laughs> TJ. You know, what's it, Trey? Y'all ain't got this. I can do y'all all day long, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, That's so how they be done. Like, bro, what are y'all doing, bro? Like, what are, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> then Kenny be like, then Kenny got the nerve to say, I'm gonna make a highlight. I'm gonna find some highlights. <laughs> hey, man, dudes are wild. <laughs> <laughs> like we found a bomb ass clip to put out. Like, bro, like, bro I mean, I, 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 hey, <laughs> it's so fine to me, though, bro. I mean, it's it's not, good, you know, bro. it's you know, I got, I'm not their audience, but I know, I know who yeah. their audience is. You know, exactly you know what I mean, for real, who yeah, their audience. Yeah, is, shout man. out to them dudes, man, for real. Where, 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 you, where can you check out <laughs> TJ and Trey, man? Yeah, so like Wednesday, um, Wednesday afternoon after you, they come on after right you. after me. Yeah, I need to start setting the stage for them. Make sure you stay on yeah, and watch. Man. <laughs> TJ and Trey drink beer, right? Yeah, so <laughs> like, um, so like this year we're pretty early, yeah. right? It's pretty early in recruiting, right? Yeah, <laughs> supposed to last year, but he said that's like that's it, good. Man. Yeah, so then like, <laughs> then it goes it comes back. Watch TJ and Trey, like what? For what? Why am I watching it? Why am I watching it? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Kenny with with that man. <laughs> Imagine being a kid and having to go through that. And like, oh, that's a bomb ass. Oh, that's a bomb ass clip right there. Hey, I'll say this to you, man. Uh, I laugh. I laugh at their show more than most of the shows that we. Hey, I, hey, hilarious. like I said, there. I'm not their hilarious. audience, but I hilarious. know exactly who their audience is. Oh, their show is a very popular show on our, on that yes, network. It is. Like, yeah, I'm not their audience, but I know who their audience is. Yeah, like, man. I told you, Kenny. I said like. We got to get them dudes like a beer sponsorship. Like, yeah. 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 Therefore, yeah. therefore, like the kind of frat boyish beer yeah. drinker who uh -huh. probably watches half the games drunk and just, you know. <laughs> yep. Plays cornhole. Yeah. <laughs> the Brandon Baumgartners of the world, like, that's, that's for them. You know what I mean? Like, and I get it. So, But no, you can listen to that on, at 3 o'clock. You can listen to uh, – you can also sign up and join a, the Insider Program yep. and uh, listen to the College Basketball Insider. Listen all your, your tight Hitman stuff. Hoops talk about the, these guys. These guys – like, it is clear to me that Penny has absolutely um, – Kind of targeted a certain type of kid, a certain type of player. Yep. Um, for this playing for, for this the class. city, man. Yeah. And <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> what you pay for the city? Yeah. <laughs> bro, you know, been a bit of my life, bro. What do you mean? Hey, you, <laughs> the guys that he's I don't bring, even know you, Penny. What are you talking about? <laughs> these guys he's bringing in are guys that are like have been consistent shooters. Um, All right, Ken, everywhere right. they've been. So now we got a, we'll uh, we got a. Uh, 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 make sure, <laughs> make sure, keep this clip in handy, and Jay. Well, no, but, but, is out. <laughs> but here's the thing, and I think we can all be. I think we all kind of got lost in the sauce when it comes to the, the, the team last year. You look at you look at uh, you look at Jaquan Walton's numbers, and he had a very efficient oh, year. God. Last year, but nothing efficient by Jaquan Walton, bro. First. I'm talking in terms of his time at Wichita State. Okay, yeah, but yeah. he shot half the amount of shots in a game. And that was the first time in his career that he shot that le at that level. Mm. So we should have done more digging and been like, maybe maybe the, the Wichita State thing was an aberration, right? Well, I guess. Well, Kobe Rogers has been in three different locations. Um, he was at Cal Poly, Siena, and Wichita State mm -hmm. and has done it everywhere. Right. The same thing everywhere he's gone. So I'm hoping it translates, man. Obviously, again, we're going to be very uh, name those three, cautious. Name those three schools again. Yeah, Cal, so, Poly, <laughs> Cal Poly, Siena, and Wichita State. So like – Upgrade every time, man. So, like, yeah, Kobe's been, like, shooting, like, <laughs> seven threes a game. Yeah, man. That's Kobe with an L, I think right? Walton, like, I think what Walton is doing is maybe. C-O-L-B-Y. Yeah. I think Walton is just, like, maybe it's just an admiration. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But we'll see, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see.
Watch TJ and Trey. Hey, like, bro, like, get, right. the, get the free man kid in and play for the city, though. Hey, I let like me say kid. this. Let me say this. I was joking aside, but for real, seriously, stay after the show today, today or tomorrow, Wednesday. Which one, which one they get? Wednesday. Yeah. Stay after the show, watch my boy TJ and Trey. Tigers on tap. Yeah. But, uh, but um, uh, um, oh, to this, let me let me make this overall point because I'm hearing a lot of talk about this type of stuff, and I'm gonna give my spill on this. Even though I don't trust y'all cops on none, of, I don't I don't trust what none of y'all <laughs> gotta say. Evaluate these dudes. I don't. I, right? I, can I be honest with you? I well, don't either. All right, but check this out. I will say this though: if you're putting together a team, like I don't like I've, I've heard some people say, well, this conference isn't good. And Penny's getting guys that are from not good teams That's a silly argument. in a not good conference, and he's putting them all together, and he's making these AAC All Stars. This program, this team, like immediately needs to raise their floor of who they are, right? Yeah. Like so, and I think these type of signings do that. Heck, they need I think players. you need to do something where you're yeah. not fifth, sixth, seventh in this conference. Yeah. You need to make moves that make you where you are the best team in this country. Yep. Oh, FAU is going to go back to being trash. You need to be number one, obviously, in this conference. Like, USF, get y'all boot. It's, it's USF, right? With my boy, Abdul yeah, Rahim. USF. You ain't Sharif, you ain't Sharif Abdul Rahim. Right. You playing for the Grizzlies, man. You ain't him. Get your booty ass back to being normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to do. <laughs> make a team to remind that dude, you are not Sharif, bro. <laughs> you, you are not the dude that played in the NBA. When I first heard, like, oh shit, we got this. we got Sharif Abdul Rahim as a coach. Hey, no, you not him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I should have worn my clock out for me shirt, man. <laughs> That's all I need. That's all I need to have it, bro. I just, I just need us. I need our floor to raise, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't care like what they are on a national scale at this point. I need yeah. them. I need them to be the best team in this conference. Win the AAC. Win the AAC. Once. Win the, the tournament. Season. And get back into the NCAA tournament, but they've got to raise the floor first because yep. they—you're not going to go from horrible like you were last year to a true like national contending team. Raise the floor, stop the bleeding, be good again, and everything will be fine. Like I don't care. I think I think I love Penny's approach. He's going to have to get some more big men, but he, but like his approach of getting guys that on paper look like to be guys that can knock down shots, versatile defenders. Which they have struggled with shooting. Yeah, throughout his I think that he can. Coach, yeah. So yeah. You, you've got your lead score that, that other kid they got. You know, awesome. it sh- you know it should be the goal this year. <clears throat> What's that? Just go into that conference tournament. And play for the season. And know we in the tournament. And know we in the tournament. Know we in the tournament. That's Already. it. Already. Just be there. Be Sign there. me up. Be there. That's Sign all Sign me up. Yep. Well, I got my jokes off, bro. Now I'm about to get mad for real. Um, WNBA draft uh, was last night, two nights ago, depending on when you're watching this. Yeah. And um, it's crazy because... For the first time in my life, I tweeted out something that I never th- thought I'd tweet out before. Where y'all watching? The hey man, where y'all watching <laughs> the, the WNBA draft? It right. So I can't believe I cut it on or not, man. A lot of times when I'm on television, I get distracted by other stuff. But yeah, I did cut it on because there was a lady that was of uh, um, Samoan descent, I believe. That um. I don't know. I guess when she went, yeah, I know of, it was a lot. Of, they had they did quite a bit of like kind of uh, a, a full figured woman that was. Yeah, they had quite a bit of like overseas type of players in this one. No, this girl uh, played for. She played for the American team. She had she. I just remember. <clears throat> I know because uh, her dress was like had like uh, tribal stuff in. Okay, I probably missed that one. She was she was a little bit on the thick side, but I I'm a I'm, <laughs> I'm pro thick women, so I'm I'm not here to judge that at all. Um, but yeah, I watched a little bit of it. But my point I'm trying to make is. Last night was a historical night for women's sports, not just the WNBA, not just yep. college basketball, not just Kaitlyn Clark, not just Angel Reese. For women's sports, that was a big moment, right? Mm-hmm. Where you could see, because for years people have said, well, man, college, co- women's college basketball has always been good, but or it's been okay, but I don't really fool with the WNBA. Like you feel like something's about to happen in yeah. the WNBA, right? <laughs> so, something is going to make change. Four like, teams. It's going to make it's going to make, yep. like, these girl, these ladies get paid mm-hmm. real money, right? Yep. It's going to – you think, see something that's like, okay, well, let's, let's get rid of – because they play <clears throat> they play opposite of, of the guys to allow these ladies to go play overseas too, right? Yeah. You feel like something's about to happen where that ends, where we can, they can make enough money in the WNBA. That's crazy. Like, as soon as they – soon as the college season ends, you get drafted, then you play the next They're going to turn around and like play literally. soon, very yeah. soon. So – that was a momentous occasion where the ladies really had center stage, right? 
And I say this all the time. Um, journalism, being in the media, those type of things, we're not delivering babies, bro. We're not <laughs> we're, we're, we're not the smartest person in the room. We're not the richest person in the room. We're not the most influential person in the room. Mm-hmm. But we really act like we are way too much more than we should, right? And <clears throat> I'm upset because, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even want to say the name of the publication. <coughs> Just be honest with you. But your boy and them, um, <clears throat> made it about themselves last night because they were denied credentials. Uh, credentials to go to cover the WNBA draft. Rightfully so, because the same publication went to the NCAA Ladies Final Four and were asking questions about. Um, oh, so they were the ones who asked Don yeah, Staley that question. Yes. The same exact people, same exact dude. I ain't shocked, but I I didn't know that. So they asked a question about um, transgender women who were naturally born men. And y'all, I'm not, if I get my words wrong, it's definitely by mistake. Um, They were asking a question about transgender women playing in WNBA, WNBA, right? And college basketball, all these type of things, right? This the discussion we're about to have is not about that, right? But it's about you disrespecting women's sports and also disrespecting the transgender community about something that is honestly an imaginary issue. Right. That's not an issue. <laughs> there, there, there is, there are no Not making it an issue. Right. Yeah. There are no group of uh, bi- biologically born men who are transgender women. Who are like have this monster plan to take over women's sports, and that's not a real thing, bro. There's not one example of that <clears throat> at all. There's not one. There's some intramural leagues that have had college intramural leagues that have had some um, some naturally uh, naturally born men who identify as women playing in those type <laughs> of leagues. But there aren't any. There are no examples of not one college basketball player that was born a man that's attempting to play women's basketball. Right. And guess what? They're not drafting WNBA players off the street, right? So they're they're actual college basketball players, right? Mm-hmm. So there's if there are no examples in college, that means there's no examples in WNBA, WNBA right? <laughs> so this, this is an imaginary argument we're having, right? And I, I asked a friend of mine, Kenny, who um, would know more about this than me, right? Because I'm not going to get into the discussion <laughs> of of, of uh, just like uh, not Kim Mulkey, but per, uh, I was coach said great topic. Wrong time. I don't. Yeah. Ha- I don't have a, a educated answer for that, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna stay out of it, right? But it's, that's not about this, what I'm about to talk about now. It's not about that. But um, I asked a friend of mine, and she said that I don't know for sure, but I think that there are not DNA, but hormonal limits they have, or something like that. Like mm. they say, they say you can participate as long as you're. <laughs> can you know where I'm trying to go with this? Yeah, there, I mean, it's it's like in even in fighting, right? Like mm-hmm. you have a certain amount of weight you can cut, but you have to hit standards. You can't just like bulk up and be like seventy pounds bigger than the person that you're fighting, right? They like said something have, about like your level of estrogen, right? Has to be now. I am uneducated when it comes to those numbers, and I'm leaving alone because I don't want to say nothing wrong. <laughs> but you no, but saying? I think, but I think you're right on that. I think, that but I is, think it's something like on that type of vibe, right? Like you, like you, um, I don't know, bro. But the point I'm trying to make is that's not an actual issue. So at this point, you're disrespecting these ladies mm-hmm. on both sides. You're disrespecting the, the athletes. This is their night, man. Right. This is the night where they transition <laughs> from college amateurs to professionals, right? right? And regardless of what they get paid, we feel like something's about to happen. We feel like the mm-hmm. WNBA is about to go to a whole other level. This feels like Magic and Bird. It felt like, it felt like Magic and Bird going to... W, also, Rav was teaming up. Right, exactly. Uh, Card- Cardoso and exactly, Reese. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's crazy. And like I told y'all, it was going to play out. Like I told uh, y'all, it was going to play out. I said, uh, <laughs> I said, Angel Reese. I said, no, I said, Kaylin, uh, Kaylin Clark is going to the whitest, this, whitest team they got. Indiana. And, and, and <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Angel Reese going to the blackest place you could go. Oh, it ain't, Chicago. It ain't the same proximity. Oh, who you tell them? They break. <laughs> oh. Hey, you think about that part. And not only that, you got the girl from South Carolina who pushed the one who pushed down uh Fly J and her Angel Reese together to go against. <laughs> hey. Hey, brother. Hey. 
Couldn't write it. Perfect. Couldn't write it any better. But like I said, the night was about the ladies, yeah. and for you as a media member to act like it's about you, whatever weirdo ass narrative you're trying to push, weird ass story you're trying to push, is disrespectful to the ladies. It's disrespectful to the transgender community. Man, let these let these people have their night, man. Yeah. Like it's not about you, bro. And to try to act like you're victims because. Damn, the man. WNBA rightfully denied y'all punk ass to access the to their thing is is <clears throat> disgusting, man. You you're trash, bro. Yep. You know what I mean? You're not moving nobly. You're not moving honorably. And it's like we clown about people who you know have a loaded question, right? <laughs> like uh, shout out to <laughs> shout out to the uh, the you the Watanabe reporters who don't give a bro. damn. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> Like, why are they here? <laughs> I understand. Do you it. think Child. Do you think you the wanna not be like I don't think shit about you the wanna not be like, <laughs> like man, hey, hey, you know he played for the team. But yeah. But man, it's not about y'all, man. It's not about it's it's not about us at all, bro. It's like mm-hmm. I can't stand being around media members who act like they're the yeah, big yeah, deal, yeah. bro. You're not, family. Oh my god. Can I add something to it? Go ahead, man. I, I think it's hilarious. I the word a word that got used all the time over the last few years that's been kind of introduced into the lexicon is is this phrase of of people that would consider themselves to be um, you know the the patriots of the of the country and the protectors of all people you know the right and the wrong people like all that kind of stuff mm. is this idea of being called a snowflake and yeah. how often someone who just says man what are you talking about like this is crazy like you're saying some really offensive shit. How long? How often have you been called a snowflake in your oh, in, in the last five times. years? I'm gonna tell you something else. I didn't notice too, man. I thought about this today. Had a weird just uh af- like affirmation came over me, man. Like uh, I see, like I've been called racist by white people a lot, right? And I've seen Tammy Sawyer get called racist, right? And I think that what those people do, like those people who are on social media and they say that stupid stuff, like oh, stop being a racist, like if like if we talk about like um if we talk about injustice and we say, okay, man, this is wild, man. Like this clearly because that person was black or, you know, that type, you know, we when we uh, we call out racism, they people say, Oh, stop being a racist, right? Like I, I like that happens all the time. And I think that what happens is I don't think those people really know what racism is. And and, and they'll say, I think that if you acknowledge if you call out race in something, they they think that's what being a racist is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you say yeah, absolutely, like like if you say race is the reason why they call you a racist for saying yeah. that race is the reason why something is it's the way it is. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. I man, y'all got to do better, man. We got to do better. Is is I just think it's hilarious that guy went on Twitter and complained and whined and moaned he about him a not story. getting a, he don't a whole care. story. Yeah. He does not care at all. He don't care. Yeah, it's, it it to me it's just it's just super weak and it just makes me laugh. I'm intrigued by the WNBA. I'm intrigued about what's about to happen. Oh, I don't. Man. I knew two ladies that were in the draft last night, right? Andrew Reese came out fine as hell. Fine, she had. <laughs> I like what she had on. <laughs> I ain't lie, bro. That's all fine. Andrew, y'all know me. Andrew Reese is physically not my type of woman. Like I like a woman with a little bit more going on. But it's something about Andrew Reese. <laughs> Well, I made an exception. But anyway, I was there. I knew two women, right? Mm-hmm. If I would have been honored to cover the WNBA draft, right? But I'm not going to act like, like, dude, I'm not. I would have been a imposter there. You know what I mean? I would have right. been a special invited guest. Like, act like that, bro, because you don't, you don't care about the WNBA. Y'all came mm-hmm. out here and tried to say, like, you know, WNBA uh, high school team would beat them. I'm like, yeah, man, y'all, the y'all don't care, man. Yep. Y'all the same dudes. You were trying to make a mockery out of it. Why? Why, man? And like their whole thing, yeah. like I said, they 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 decided a few years ago we're gonna profit off of weird. It's a lot of weird, crazy ass people that are passionate. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get behind them because they're gonna be our. We can use we can feed into their stupidity. Their stupidity can turn into widespread ignorance, and that ignorance will be our marketing tool. Yep. And that's what that that's company what decided yep. to do a few years ago. And that's what that's what's what you see now. Because the guy who was over it, he hadn't always been this big of an idiot. I used mm-hmm. to actually enjoy listening to him. But he does this this thing now with, with and it's became what it's become. But I tell you uh, what, yeah. man. I got Good. some breaking news that I just got to my phone mm-hmm. about the last team USA spot we was talking about. Mm-hmm. Where? Kawhi Leonard. Oh, why has he never been on the team? Like they, they well, said he's gonna be never been on the team either, so they say for yep. They announced that he's gonna be? Yep. Oh, okay, that's dope. Oh yeah, Kawhi is over. Ain't nobody yep. doing nothing. <laughs> 
Hey, they're going to shut down the whole damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> they might, they, hey, 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 you might as well just mail those, uh, <laughs> mail the mails in, man, for sure. But I tell you what, bro, you about to take a break when we come back inside the same brain. Oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's going down. We ain't beefing, though. We good. <laughs> yeah, it's going down, bro. It's going down. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I've been feeling froggy, bro. <laughs> Ever since this stuff was drinking, I'm gonna get, hey, who, hey, who, wanna, who on hey, Who are you in Green hey, Twitter? Who are you in Green Media? I wanna on? get in the studio now. <laughs> hey, I wanna, I wanna get on some folks and say, Joe Monday, bring your. No, I'm <laughs> and then somebody go tag uh, somebody tag Joe That's like I'm gonna do this next time saying and, and yeah. Joe get into it. Like, man, Joe don't Joe gonna be on some J Cole, my bad, I apologize type shit, man. Joe don't want this goddamn smoke. But yeah, we gonna go to break, man. We come back inside the same brain, man. Y'all know that it is sponsored by good friends at Credit Seed, man. We'll see y'all in a minute. Former Memphis Tiger, um, former Creighton Blue Jay, uh, Jonathan Lawson. Didn't play many minutes at either place. No. no. I like Jonathan, though. I wish he would have stayed around last year. I felt that way, too, because I think he really had some of those moments where you were like, he's got the length, he can handle the ball, he, he can, can shoot. shoot, he can pass the ball. And but, it, but it's just never really materialized. So my one big pause, I don't know if he's really someone that you want to – pursue as a scholarship player when you have so many holes I'll say this. to fill. He's one of he's probably the most athletic Lawson. Oh by far. Yeah. Definitely. So like definitely. he can run the floor. Yeah. Um yeah, I, and I think he's got a little bit of upside defensively that you could probably unlock. You just gotta get him in the right place at the right time. I would like it. I would not mind it in the slightest. I Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Coon every Tuesday at twelve PM on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. We talked about Lou Esposito leaving, hitting the portal. Yeah. And boy, <laughs> boy, did Ryan deliver on a, a, a backfill. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about like, oh, it's got to be a very specific coach. Like it's got to be a, a, someone who has DC experience, but they also are going to have to find a D-line coach. Like who are they going to hire? And I think they figured it out. TJ, when we had a full DC opening, said there's no way Nowinski leaves why would he and he seemed correct a little bit of how this has played out has me questioning whether or not <laughs> old Lou was pushed out never maybe Ryan got a little win that uh, Nowinski wanted a little flavor of that Memphis barbecue said hey you guys got any bussies near town got on down here Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. At Create a Sig, our top priority is to provide the best customer service experience as possible while offering the largest variety of vape supplies, legal THC products, and smoking accessories. Our trained sales associates are here to assist any and all customers to help them find the best products available. With our daily deals, weekend deals, loyalty rewards program, and our punch card program, there are tons of rewards to earn to help our customers save plenty of money along the way. Check out one of Creative Sig's four locations across the greater Memphis area and come visit us. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Inside the same brain, sponsored by our good friends at Creative Sig. Four area locations, man. You got my favorite one, of course, is the one on Madison and McLean. That's Kenny right. Stubberfield. We Which we will be there. We will be there. I don't know if my boy Perry is going to be come through or not, but me and Kenny will be there this Saturday, 3 to 5 p.m. at the Madison and McLean location. I'm telling you, man, it's going down. Meet your boy if you've never met me before. I'd love to meet you guys. Man, smoke one with your boy, puff one with your boy, vape one with your boy, pop a Eddie Monster, an element with your boy, man. Whatever you want to do, we're going to fire it up for 420, man. I'm trying to tell you, I want to meet y'all. Come out, check us out. 
for 420 is going to be a good experience. I don't know what version of me you might see, man. I might be real <laughs> laid back. I might not even understand. I might even know where I'm at. They might have, I say, you are, you on the moon. I might, I might be on the moon, riding a hot air balloon with a baboon in the, over the blue lagoon. I ain't going to be part of the solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> I might be on some weekend and burden shit. They may have me just toting me around and uh, for real. But it's going down this Saturday, meet and greet from 3 to 5. At Creative Sig. Check them out, man. I had uh had a listener reach out to me. Said they went and bought the Saint Asylum pack uh, the other day. Uh somebody who's a longtime uh supporter of, of what we've been doing here at the show. Uh said they went and got the Saint Asylum pack. Man, go check them out, man. Good stuff for sure, man. Like I said, if you are the thing I love about Creative Sig Kitty is that if you are new to the if you are, if you a vet, if you like a Traditional marijuana smoker, whatever you're doing, you can go there. They'll get you the, the five Delta Eight products. They, they can speak your language. Or if you're brand new, right? If you're brand new to trying uh, the legal, the legal, the legal cannabinoid uh, marijuana stuff, the Delta Eight products. <laughs> like I said, it's absolutely legal. Uh, if you're new to those products, they can break it down for you. Oh my god! And they, they, you won't be intimidated. Yeah. They'll let you know. They'll ask you what your needs, why, why you want to use. Is it recreational? You got some pain stuff going on. They'll get you right, man, and, and they'll show you how to take those baby steps to get, to get the effect that you want to get. Hey, you're a good time, man. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, this one right here, I've not been medicated while d- dissecting this topic. <laughs> I've been on this so hard. Something I said was lame a few weeks ago. <laughs> it's no longer it's no lame. no longer lame, man. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. I'm embracing the fact that Old ass rappers, <laughs> old ass multi millionaire super boss level rappers are getting into it about old man shit, right? <laughs> when you got dudes like when you got a dude with a tummy tuck talking about another dude with a tummy tuck, like hey, that's what I want to see. <laughs> nah, so <laughs> when I see old dudes arguing about young girls, <laughs> when I see old dudes arguing about girls half their age. That's got. That's well, kind of. I see dudes throwing NBA players in this. Right. <laughs> Out the blue. Out the blue. Why is Drake dating the same girls? Josh. That Dave. might told Metro Broomin to stay on the drums. What? <laughs> stay right there for me. <laughs> People are like say, Drake, your boy. Yeah, Drake, my boy. John, your boy. Here's my man. Matter of fact, I said hey, you him, right? You, you, I'm the I'm the boy who, who, who tossed it to John like he was the Messiah, like I was the the Apostle John. You could be cool with two people that's beefing. <laughs> got nothing to do with you. Here's my response. John ain't no rapper, man. Right. John's, a, John's a basketball like, player. He, I, I, I don't need him to respond. I hope he don't respond. And just like if John got on TV, say, "Hey Drake, get your ass on this court." I, I, hey, I'm not gonna be. Ooh, Drake. No, Drake, John ain't no rapper. But it is it is absolutely wild, bro. It is absolutely wild that they're dating the same women. <laughs> oh, man. My God. Hey, it's my help. Poor John. That, that age gap. Oh, man. Drake gives it to everybody who wants it. Like, it, 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 like, the whole thing he's mad about, John, about, I'm not going to get into the, the stuff, yeah. but like, when Metro Moomin dropped the album, right? He said, stay on this side. John was like, he said, stay on, you know, choose, pick a side. Yeah. And then John was like, yeah, stay on this side. And they could have just been. But I don't think that. Dude, what's that? You direct? I don't, you I don't know. <laughs> nothing about, hey, I'm leaving out there alone, bro. He, hey, right, I don't know. Hey, what Fred Smith say? That's grown man conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a kid when it comes down to this. That's grown men with money in their conversation. That's and they true. women. I'm out of it. I don't care what John doing in his free time. Just to get back on that court and hey. be ready next year. <laughs> but whatever keep my boy Ja. No more she, suspensions. Just need you on the court. If you if you if you and Drake got a jostle for jostle for Jots yeah, out here. Get, like, get, get, in, uh, <laughs> get in the boxing ring and bear it out one time. I don't care, man. Up. Hey, I don't care about none of it. Like hey, because hey, because Drake is it gave everybody to smoke. Uh, he had it for uh, 50 Cent. He had it for... Uh, he sure did. Not <laughs> 50 Cent. He had it for... Uh, Metro uh, Boomin. Not future. Metro Boomin. Rick Ross. Rick, he had it for Rick Ross. Drop and uh, give him 50. Uh, can't you know more? <laughs> Man, Kenny. All right. I'm a big listener to Joe Budden podcast, right? Right. I fool with Joe. You know I fool with Joe. <laughs> Joe Budden has been alluding to Drake having some level of all power thing in the music industry, right? We're kind of like, like if if I'm if if I'm Apple Music, right? <clears throat> if Drake came to me and said, "Hey, you know the Drake stimulus package, right? It like makes people music blow up." I need that, but I need it from y'all. I need y'all to pay me. 
Like if, if a certain artist that I get behind blows up, I need y'all to pay me. And I can see Apple Music being, okay, we'll do that. Because you the biggest act in hip hop, right? Yeah. And Joe's kind of alluding that that type of something like that is out there. Like the Drake has this deal where he makes money off of other artists, but the artists may not know that Drake is making money off of him. And he said he feels like a lot of his anger towards Drake is because artists may have felt like, artists may have found out <coughs> that Drake is their boss <laughs> to an extent, right? Like he's pitching off of people money. And with that being said, the title, Drop and Give Me 50, it's a little different if you think about it in that type of context. But he's he's talking about Kenji Lamar yeah, and how like his manager is how your manager is, is is killing you for your your deal. You you got people getting half of your money all over the place and you getting halves of halves and all that type of stuff. But uh there was one there was another line that was flagrant by Drake who who said some flagrant stuff. He did. Um in the in the in the Kendrick Lamar song, right? Kendrick says uh, <clears throat> Kendrick said something to the tone of like talking about like we might run up on you and you better tuck your chain in we're gonna snatch your chain off all that type of stuff right mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Drake comes back like I'm gonna wear all my jewelry because I'm gonna be with security like Whitney I'm gonna be with the bodyguards like mm -hmm. Whitney mm. now you know the movie yeah, the, the bodyguard right? right. Kevin Costner, yeah. Costner right mm -hmm. alright Kendrick Lamar's wife's name is Whitney and there's a rumor that she <laughs> got up with a bodyguard. Hey, stop it, man! Flagrant as hell, bro. Hey, that's that's research. The man said, "I'm gonna be with the bodyguard. If you come up on me, that's I'm gonna be with research, the bodyguard bro. like Whitney." That's some real research, bro. That's so flagrant. <laughs> Drake. Drake is a bad man, bro. <laughs> and Joe Budden was breaking it down. He was like, "Man, like Drake is like a a, a billionaire with a, with a sex addiction, <laughs> which is a bad place to be, bro." <laughs> but it's, it's literally what's yeah, going man. on, man. And they said he said he thinks that people like it's kind of like if uh, if uh, I'm not gonna use y'all, but let's say I got a group of friends, right? And I've slept with all my friends, girlfriend, their wife, whatever. Of course, you can say, yeah, man. Well, you know that you got you got to blame the woman, right? But daddy started thinking, bro, dude, do you really like us or are you just like us because of the women we go have around us? Because you're literally sleeping with all our women, right? You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, I might have started looking at you like maybe you ain't really cool with me. You just, it's just some weird sex thing you got going on mm -hmm. through us or whatever. But, uh, man, as far as the, the 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 rap is concerned, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying all of it. I'm enjoying yeah. stuff from Kendrick I to Drake. Too. I enjoy J. Cole coming out. So look at J. Cole trying to come out. But I'm very disappointed he didn't set his ass back down, tucked his tail in. I, go ahead. I still am. I hate. I guess I hate that he did in. The, that he dropped it in the first place. Yeah, I wish just, he just don't drop. It. I wish he just never stay dropped. out of. Because I understand now. I understand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's ain't perfect. He thought it you. was. A, he thought it was kind yeah. of a, a game, right? Yeah, exactly. Like it was just a. Like you said, it was a promo run. <laughs> yeah, these right. yeah, these these folks call out. Yeah, they going at each other for yeah. real. So he was so like, who's oh, had nah. the? Has Drake had the best? Response? To me, right now, man. Oh, I mean, yeah. To me right now, the scorecard is is uh, hey, you know I, I I'm I'm gonna make a I'm what? gonna make a laugh Olympics reference, man. The the Drake Yahoo is on the lead right now, man. What? To me, also in this too, I he gets more bonus points for it being his song. Kendrick Lamar wants say that. he wants somebody else bro, song. Like bro, Kendrick Lamar is my man, bro. That's my guy. Yeah, like that man be doing so much Chico <laughs> stuff, bro. Like how you gonna how you gonna jump on like probably one of the most like known. Club like generationally long uh, aged songs were like that song came out like in the eighties, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that 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 uh, who that uh who the Crocus beat that Three Six Mafia used. That was like a, a L A West Coast club song from the eighties, right? That they turned into a hit that was like eighties nineties. Then Three Six Mafia used it. It was big. A lot of people used that. It's just a known club beat, right? You use that, and you got Future who makes music that's like for the strippers yep. and stuff anyway. And then you hop on it and you do your verse on it as a feature. Man, I, I ain't going to lie. For Drake get bonus points for me just for stepping out solo. Exactly. Yeah. Stepped out solo. Now, I ain't going to act like Kendrick didn't get on his head. Now. No, that he man, got in there. He, he did. He killed him. No. 
But, he killed him for sure. Yep. But, but like also Drake did so what four people, five people, man, Drake, six people, everybody, <laughs> all y'all. Oh, we, the weekend, thing. all y'all. Yo, the weekend Metro too. Mule, I Future, that. whoever you want to come get it. Yeah. I yeah. don't know who Baby Mama. He was somebody at the, at the <laughs> what's name? But, hey, go. Hey, hope, hope they ain't talking. Hope they ain't pillow talking. All like, like yeah, they hit different. Like it's yeah. I wish they ain't kissing and telling. I'm ready for the response from Kendrick. And then he called a man out like, man, what you waiting on? He might say drop, drop him, drop him, give him fifty. He said that about five times throughout the whole. Man, that's uh, a, hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. To see these old dudes, <laughs> see these old dudes rapping about old dude stuff, is, I'm loving. It. I got a question. Man. Why did people think it was AI? What did where did that whole thing come from? Cause it just sounded fake sound. That just didn't sound <laughs> like I knew. I knew that uh, the lyrics. I knew it went real. Cause like we we could hear like Drake breath pattern all that type of stuff. Yeah. And then that man got Kate uh Kyle not in that <laughs> And the actual lyrics to it. I'm like, nah, ain't no AI. If AI, if AI did that, we in trouble. <laughs> nah, but see, here's the thing. <laughs> we in real trouble. <laughs> this is what this is what people confuse by AI. When people you listen to AI songs, yeah, they're using the lyrics are somebody that wrote those lyrics, right? But okay. like, but there's a, the computer is like mimicking Drake's Transcribing. voice, like it's talking like Drake. But it's not saying, hey, go make a song about this. And it's yeah. like, oh, no, it ain't that. Yeah. Like, it's we're, you write the lyrics, and then you feed them but into the machine. You know, and nobody else writing them. Right. Listen, nah. I, mean, I know he has that, those writers. That was some, it was some <laughs> stuff in there that sounded like it was a little bit too juvenile for Drake. But, yeah, 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 yeah right. it, it was Drake, though, man. Nah. But like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun going forward, man. It's going to be it's gonna be fun for sure. Like, I think it's going to be. So does it become a Kendrick Drake battle, or is Rick still involved? Oh, no, it's everybody versus Drake. Hey, it's, it's the Avengers. It's the Avengers it's in-game. versus Drake. <laughs> Drake said, I, I'm Thanos. Thanos. I, got, yeah. I got something for all you <laughs> this jokers. This is what this is. Uh, everybody who want it, come get it. But Kendrick <laughs> Lamar is front and center, so I guess Kendrick Lamar is Captain America. Anyway. So who's, who's, <laughs> who do y'all think is next, then? Who's going to be next? Kendrick. It's supposed to be Kendrick. Kendrick. Because I don't think, well, I guess Future dropped a whole album saying we still, I, don't, I guess that, I didn't I ain't listen to it yet. I don't know if he. Bro, I'm, I'm again, really but. struggling too, man, because like I said, I already lost Drake and Future, man. The, the, the Toxic Avengers are gone. Like that, that group is I ain't, gone. Dang, dang, no more Drake and Rick Ross. No more Drake and Rick Ross. <laughs> oh, that one hurts I too. got one more. No more Drake and French Montana. They into it too. All this gone, man. The toxicity is just. Ow. Took a lick, man. <laughs> man, it's like this and it took this a lick, is, uh, man. This is what Tupac versus the whole East Coast again, ain't it? <laughs> man, with the, the softest dude in the world being Tupac. <laughs> God, dog. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. <laughs> Got this again. Hit him up. <laughs> we gotta get here. Gonna be fighting over uh, God, dog. Ketchup chips and poor Jaws stuck in the middle. <laughs> right, yeah, just get, get Stay out with catch it straight. Hey, bro. just go hoop, man. We so straight, man. Just go hoop. <laughs> Go like, hoop, man. Metro Boomin on rap, so he I don't see what his response would be. Yeah. He make beats. Job ja, mellow out, man. Just go to the weekend as a singer. I don't know where to <laughs> Oh, he can his ass like, go and get his ass towards. Him. How do y'all feel about I've seen a lot of Memphians say, is this the final straw for Drake and no, Memphis? This thing got nothing to do with none of that. I'm a Drake fan. I don't know what y'all are talking about. I'm not gonna stop li- listening to Drake over no I never really just beef between him and Ja over no women. Like, I got me screwed up. I never you know? really care for Drake anyway. I mean I listen Drake to stuff, guy. but are you I mean, serious? So, no, this is beef. I just like the yeah, I, I said it on Twitter. The pissed off Drake rapping is the great is the best oh, thing. No, nah, I like his rap. I like, like crooning like, Drake, yeah. singing Drake, crying Drake, <laughs> man, fake Jamaican Drake, whatever you want, East Indian Drake, whatever you got, man, I'm down for it. I just never care. I guess on the it, like, house music Drake, whatever you got, I'm know, down for it. Like man, my favorite bro. artist, he was just never up that level. But I mean, I used to watch the Grassy. He was after on the Grassy, so yeah. I knew about Drake long before. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man. But everybody just mellow out, man. If you want to mellow out, good place to try is uh, Credit City. Kenny, some more stuff they talking about doing this weekend too. Man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm hand over you to talk, talk about that one, okay? Yeah, uh, hold on. They got a uh, so they got really good deals. 420 deals coming up at Creative City. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts on Thursday, uh, April 18th, and ends on Sunday, uh, April 21st. Um, here's, we're going to throw up a, a poster for it, but mm-hmm. it, 30% off of a lot of different items. They've got the Torch Life Sugar Disposables, Torch Burnout Blend Disposables, Herb Infinity Blend Disposables, um, Pre-Rolls, Flowers, Caviar Sauce, what the hell? Torch Caviar <laughs> Sauce Disposables, yeah. 25% off of cart mods, 20, uh, 20% off of a bunch of edibles, glassware, smoking accessories. Ooh. Other deals are coming up. $80 THC bundle bags will drop. Down to just sixty for this week only. A bunch of really dope stuff, man. The four twenty sale at Create a Sig going available down. everywhere. Going down all four of their locations. But, but come on Saturday, three o'clock to five p.m. at the uh, at ten North McLean, and come see Anthony and pick up some of those uh, some of those packages, man. It's gonna be dope. oh man, it's going down. Like I said, I'll be in the building. Kenny be in the building. 
The righteous man himself perished. Nah, I ain't gonna be there. <laughs> hey, I'm, gonna get I'm gonna get Paris there. Hey, hey we're Paris in the thing. Blaze up in this show nah. for Twitter, man. Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna be at the house watching the NBA playoffs. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Oh, Lord. It's all good, man. But like I said, we will be there, man, 3 to 5 p.m. I don't know what version of me you're going to see, man. Pray for me. Pray for me. Hopefully, hopefully look. you remember them. Man, Don't exactly. Me. <laughs> no memory of seeing none of y'all. <laughs> yeah. He's a bunch of pictures taking hands. Pictures on loud, making horrible. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. For my man, Perry Sharky, man. From Kenny Stubblefield behind the glass. Hey, before we go. What you got, huh? We got one more show in the studio this week. And it's going to be done. Oh, Friday. yeah. We're done. This Friday. After the, this streaming. Friday coming out on 12. Yep. At 12 o'clock. We got a real special guest. real special guest we got cooking up for y'all, man. It's, it's boiling in my stomach, man. Like, like I got the bubble guts or something, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. It's going down, man. This final show in the studio, man. We're going we gonna to take a break from the studio for, you know, next few months, man. You're going to chill doing it from the house, man. Uh, but, but, you know, with the major sports getting out the way, going to take that little break, whatever. Final show in the studio is going to be. This uh, 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 this Friday show special guest for sure. Like I said, for my man Paris Sharkey, for Kenny Stubblefield behind the glass. It's Anthony the Sane Show. See y'all next time, and we out. Thank you for listening to the Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.